we're in this series, and the title of the series is Follow. And if you were with us last week, you remember we talked about how we follow Jesus as a slave, as a servant. And the whole idea was that we as followers of Jesus, we need to have an attitude, a mindset of self-denial, of service, and of humility. Well, in several other places, Jesus addresses this need for us to have a different mindset, and that is what he's doing here today. Last week, we looked at how he used a slave. Well, today, he's going to use children or a child to help us understand this idea of humility in following him. So in Mark 10, verses 13 to 16, we read what you just uh, was demonstrated before you. Verse 13 says, people were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them. Uh, in Luke and Matthew, it says parents. We understand parents, adults, aunts, uncles, grandparents. Any adult was bringing these children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me. And do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Verse 15, I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive, anyone who will not receive, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will not enter it. And he took the children in his arms put his hands on them, and he blessed them. Father, today we ask that you would instruct our hearts, that God, you would give us a new mindset about the kingdom of God, about, about where you rule and reign, and God, how we, as we follow you, what our part in it is. God, help us to grasp this beautiful picture of a child and that child's relationship to you. God, I pray for everyone here, old, young, new, been here many years. God, regardless of our time serving you, God, that we would hear the voice of the Lord today, that he wants us to approach him in an attitude of humility like a little child. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, amen, amen. So, we find Jesus having to instruct the disciples again on this whole idea of about humility and the kingdom of God. If we're going to follow Jesus, it is critical, as the scripture says, if we're going to enter in, if we're going to be a part, if we're going to follow him, that we have to have this mindset, this understanding of denial, service, and humility. And today we're looking at this idea of a child or of our children. Now when we look at this, this story, there's three different sets of adults. There's Jesus, who's got it going on. He understands. But there's two other sets of adults. There's the disciples, and then there's the parents or the adults who brought the kids. Now, the disciples, as long as they've been with Jesus, they are missing it. They don't understand how Jesus feels about children. They don't understand how important his relationship is. Listen, they don't understand how important his relationship is to them, and they don't understand their relationship to him is based upon the mind, the attitude, and the heart of a child. So when they are being uh, hard toward these children, it's speaking a lot of things to Jesus, and that's why you see him respond with such a hard way with, with an indignant attitude because not only is it saying how Jesus feels about them, but it's saying also that you don't get the kingdom of God is just like that. And if you don't see that, if you don't understand that, how are you going to follow me? And then he goes on to these beautiful parents, which are a lot like you and I. We want our kids in Noah's Ark. We, we want to bring our kids in, and we want them to, to learn from two up to uh, kindergarten all about Jesus and, and how, to, how to say their grace. I, I have a, a grandson, and, and 
we are learning how to wash our hands like we never learned how to wash our hands before because he won't do a meal without washing his hands. And all these things they learn in Noah's Ark, in Impact, in Rangers, Kinder Church, Super Church, Revolutionary Show. We bring our children to Bearwood Christian Center because we want them to be affected, infected by Jesus. How many people in our community, how many people who don't go to church, who don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, listen, this will shock you, how many people in our community who are not in this room on Sunday, who visit us rarely, bring their children to Noah's Ark, bring their children to Impact, bring their children to Shelter, Rangers, because they might not have a relationship with Jesus themselves, they might not go to church here, but they recognize they recognize that their children need Jesus here. We are just like those parents. So this morning, I want to go through some scriptures. Let's look at Deuteronomy. And we want to see how the Bible talks about our relationship with children and what it should look like. We're going to look at two points this morning, two simple points. The first one is children are loved. And then the second one is we are like children. Our children are our example. Okay, first point. Children are loved. In Mark chapter 10, passage where we're reading, it says, when Jesus saw this, he saw uh, the disciples pushing away the children and their parents. He was indignant. That means he was moved with emotion. He said to them, let the children come to me and do not hinder them. I want you to read that. Not only does he not want us to hinder them, but he wants us to bring them. He not only does not want us to hinder them, but he wants us to have a process. He wants us to have a church. He wants us to have an attitude. He wants us to have a heart that invites children to come here. It's not just about, God, I'm not doing anything to hinder him, but what's your heart toward inviting them? Don't hinder them, but invite them. Verse 16, and he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and then he blessed them. You can tell a whole lot about a society, about how they view and how they treat children. In the Old Testament, many Gentile countries and nations, they would burn children as an offering to God. So in the midst of this cruel treatment of children, what was God's attitude? Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 through 7. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 through 7. Anna, why don't you come up here? I want you to join me. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 through 7. And we're going to see exactly how Jesus felt about children. And I want you to read this right here. Read, read those verses for me, okay? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when, you're, when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Amen. Jesus says, I want you to impress. What is he saying? Impress upon your children my love for them and their love for me. It was not a casual thing for the Israelites in their relationship with their kids. However, that was God's heart. The Israelites' hearts in many situations where they were a, 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 a man-driven society. They viewed with disdain in many cases women and children. Uh, decisions started with the man. Decisions ended with the man. And women and children were treated secondarily. And I don't believe that was God's heart then. I don't believe it's God's heart for us today. And, and the disciples in the midst of this, they found themselves on the opposite side of Jesus and how he felt about children. Come on back here with me, man. Jesus really, really loved his children. You can sit right there. And he demonstrated that to them because when he brought them near, he would hold them. 
in a few verses, a few chapters prior to this, Jesus told the disciples, if you receive a child, when you receive a child, you receive me. And when you receive me, you receive the Father. See, Jesus wanted us to have a heart for children that was totally contrary to our natural inclination. He wanted us to, to understand that spiritually we needed to love our children. Jesus had great compassion for children, and the disciples did not understand it. Now listen to me, church. I wonder what would have been the disciples' posture, what would have been their response if parents would have been bringing injured, diseased children to Jesus? What do you think the disciples' response would have been? Do you think it would have been the same? Probably not. They would have probably said, bring the injured, physically handicapped, diseased, hurting children to Jesus. Now, now watch the picture. We are okay with you bringing the, the physically hurt, but we don't want you bringing healthy children to Jesus. We got a problem with Jesus taking children in his arm that aren't injured, that aren't maimed, that, that, that don't have some physical ailment. And I think if we're not careful, careful, we as parents, we as grandparents and adults, we can maintain that same attitude. I can, I can see the disciples saying, hey, hey, Jesus, we are just too busy for these kids. Man, we, we, as a matter of fact, we got kingdom business going on. In a few, are you smiling down there? Are you smiling? Good, okay. Uh, we got kingdom business going on. As a matter of fact, Jesus, you know what? You're getting ready to lay down your life for the world. What time do we have to be messing around with these kids? They didn't get it. Jesus said that's what the kingdom of God is all about. It's about having an attitude like a child. And I have to, if I be honest with you, I have to say, your pastor's got some issues too. Because, see, oftentimes I don't love and appreciate children the way Jesus did. See, sometimes... My grandkids and my kids, when they, could, they would come to me and I would kind of push them to the edges because I was busy. Now, many times I wasn't busy. I was just doing what I wanted to do. And what I wanted to do was more important. What I wanted to do was more important than reading to my children. The cowboys are on and you know that this is my time, so you need to go wait. Well, you know, I'm, I'm working on my, on my car right now. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm doing something that's important to me. And you know, it's, it's okay. I know you want to read to me, but right now you can read to me later when I have time for you. Now, now many of you say, Pastor, I would never say that. But what does your attitude say? When, when your little child has, has discovered this, this thing that, that walks this what is the thing? Daddy grand le the granddaddy legs? What's that thing called? Daddy granddaddy, what is it called? Daddy long legs? And, 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 and I know you thought I was getting ready to go into some karate, but I, that's daddy grand granddaddy legs. What is it called? Daddy long legs. <laughs> yeah, the spider. And, and the child is seeing daddy go out. Uh, granddaddy, what is his name again? Daddy long legs, daddy long legs. And they wonder, and they said, daddy, why is it? Why is that spider like? Why has he got those legs? And why does he walk like? Well, listen, I don't have time. Go talk to your mom. She can tell you. <laughs> well, well, Daddy, I, I, I'm learning how to play the xylophone. Can I play it for you? No. <laughs> you cannot play your xylophone for me. My grandkids are, are learning how to play the xylophone for Christmas. Uh, number they're going to do. And, and when I see them coming, I say, oh, my Lord. <laughs> and I'm convicted. I'm convicted because they want to perform for me. And God is saying, look, don't you get it? 
the way they come, the way they come, and, and they, want to, they want to show off, they want to bless me, is the way God wants me to be about him. Daddy, Daddy, I want to bless you. And God has given us this beautiful example in our kids, and we are too busy to get it. That is, if you're here, repent with me. Grandfathers, if you're here, repent with me. We are doing our children a disservice by not giving them our attention. It's not enough that our wives, it's not enough that our teachers, it's not enough that Noah's Ark and, and Super Church and Children's Church and, and, and Impact and Rangers are, are loving our kids. They need us. And everybody in here give the Lord a round of applause. Men, they need us. They need us. They need us. Say, we need you. Say it like they're here. Say, we need you. Amen. You can go see. Give her a round of applause. Amen. Jesus loved kids. Jesus loved kids. He loved kids. And too often, we got everything that's more important than hanging out with our kids. But Beverly Christian, it's not just about our kids. It's about their kids. It's about their kids. If we're going to saturate our city with the heart of God, we got to have a heart for their kids. We got to provide a place here that's, that, that, that has quality staff. That, that is not overburdened because they have to be here every Sunday because everybody's not helping with the kids because everybody doesn't value kids. I, I, I'm embarrassed to say that we used to have what we call a uh, family ministry, a family church. And when we would announce that next Sunday is going to be family ministry and the kids would be here, many of us would choose not to be here. Jesus is indignant with that attitude. He's indignant because that very attitude says that we don't want you, that I don't want to be with you. I am so excited about the energy that's in this room to this morning, that, 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 that our kids, our, can we just give our, ki our guests a very big round of applause? <laughs> Amen. So, this morning, I want us to love our kids. I want us to love our kids, and I want us to love their kids, the ones that are yet to come. Our staffing in the nursery, our staffing in Impact and Rangers and Super Church and Children's Church is below what it needs to be to take care of our kids. So, I'm asking you today, if you, if you are convicted in heart and say, Pastor Hooker, I know I need to do better. I want you to reach down between your seats and there's this connection card. I want you to fill it out, put your name on it, and put it on there say, call me. And Amy and her staff will call you, tell you what's available here with children, and they will get you involved with children. Then you will be taking a practical step to say, Jesus, I hear your message for me today that I need to stop hindering kids. I need to prepare a place to welcome and receive kids. If that's you, I want you to do that. Men, a lot of us men, we have no business being around the kids. That's, we just, we just, there's just things about us. We need to be doing other things. So this is what I do through men's ministry. We can't be in the classroom necessarily, but there's some other things we can do to support children's ministry. We have a thing called ministry brokers, and we're going to be presenting that to men around the church in a couple of weeks. And what we do is, is give time and money to children's activities. And as men's ministry, we rally to rangers when they need some help. We rally to impact when they need help. We rally to the nursery, and we provide our services, our finances, to ensure that the leaders in children's ministry don't have to worry about finances, they don't have to worry about food. We as the men's ministry say we will be here to support you in that way. Last year, during the first week of December, men's ministry gave a check for $1,000 to children's ministry. Then, on top of that, we gave them a banquet, a quality banquet, in which we served each and every member of children's ministry. 
because we care, we care as men about our children. So although we might not be in the classroom, we don't want to be absent. So men, you're going to be hearing about that. I ask you to join us in ministry brokers. We got to take care of our kids. We got to make room for them. So as God brings children here, that we can provide a quality ministry for. I was in the gym this week, and I met a young man who I had seen coming in and out of Noah's Ark. And uh, I spoke to him, and I said, hey, man, do you know who I am? He said, no, I don't know you. I said, well, you got a, a child in Noah's Ark. And he said, yeah, yeah. I said, well, how's, how's your service? He said, I love it. It's great. I have two kids. One's kindergarten, one's uh, pre-K, and, and one's four. And I said, well, do you have two? He said, no, I have one on base and one here. I said, well, why do you have one on uh, here at Noah's Ark and one on base? He says, well, because the one at Noah's Ark is not old enough to be in pre-K, and I want to make sure that they get a Christian grounding before they get into public school. See, that, that individual doesn't go to church here. You would be shocked and amazed, Beverly Christian Center family, about the number of people who receive services from our children's ministry from Noah's Ark who don't attend church here. And that's the heart that God has given us as ministry to take care of others. So the first thing is we ought to love children. Second thing that we have to understand is that children are our example. Mark 10, 14 through 15, when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Verse 15, I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter. Jesus is saying, if you don't operate in total dependence upon me and humility, you won't be a part of the kingdom of God. That is the mode of operation. That's, that's how we live in the kingdom of God is by being broken and humble. Jesus says that the objective state which every child who's ever lived, regardless of race, regardless of culture, background, has experienced is a helpless dependence upon their parents. Every child in the world is absolutely, completely, totally, objectively, subjectively, extensively helpless without their parents. That's why there's such a penalty for parents who don't take care of their kids. Our nation recognizes that our children are dependent upon us for everything. And Jesus says, this is the example I want for you disciples. I want you those very kids that you pushed away. I want you to be dependent upon me like they're dependent upon their parents. Totally, helplessly dependent. And not only dependent, but walking in an attitude and a heart of simplicity. The simple humble, unquestioning, trustful manner in which a child accepts what is offered to them. God wants us to be just like that with him, that we accept, we trust God, whatever you offer to us. But the big challenge for the, for the uh, disciples and those following him is that when it came to the kingdom of God, and that's what he's talking about, their idea of the kingdom of God was with a ruler that ruled with power and authority, a man. They could not fathom that the kingdom of God was based upon a mentality and an attitude of a child. And it just upset Jesus because they, and today, many of us, we just don't get it. Jesus actually became indignant as he openly rebuked the disciples for standing in the way of the children. Then he announced that the kingdom of God is made up with people with attitudes just like that. So, two points. First, is that we need to love children. Second, is that children are our example. So what's the application for you and I today? We need to ask ourselves, a question. Number one, am I like the disciples? Do I have an attitude that does not receive or make clear a path for children to Jesus? Is there things in my life, are there things that I do that, that does not promote children's growth spiritually? Or am I 
a parent that does? Am I a disciple that, listen, that on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights, I got my kids playing softball and soccer and minimizing their spiritual growth? Now, I'm not here to judge anybody about what you do with your kids. But I am telling you, church, we are failing the test. And Jesus is indignant about our attitude about sports and activities compared to our attitude about our chi children being healthy spiritually. I, 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 I'm just being honest with you. I hope you still love me. Um, please pray for me if you disagree with me. But we got to do better. We put more time and attention into their physical development than we do time and attention and heart into their spiritual development. That was the disciples. No, this is not important. This is. Or are we going to be a parent, like the parents here, who are bringing their children to Jesus and saying, I want my children in the presence of God. And I don't care who is trying to stop me. I want my children in a church that values children. I want my children in a church as a parent that makes it easy for my children to love Jesus. I am so grateful for Bellevue Christian Center because I have heard parent after parent after parent tell me the reason they are here is because their kids love rangers. The reason they come here is because their kids love shelter and revolution. The reason these parents come here is because Beverly Christian Center has made it easy, has promoted, has acknowledged that a church needs to be a place for children. And there's churches all over Omaha that are dying today because they don't have children as a priority. So, I got some testimonies. I want you to listen to them. It's from some of our church members, from some people who've gone to church here, and some parents, and some people who work in, uh, in children's ministry, and they want to share with you how important children's ministry is to them. Let's watch. When I was in shelter, one of the things that like really made me want to stay in shelter and, and keep coming around was just the love that I felt from the leaders and from the friends that I had made. Um, they, they really made me feel I was a part of something and that I was a part of this family. I have incredible memories of shelter because of how valued I felt. And I was I think in middle school. I remember these super cool adults and like young adults were interested in me. I really can't even thank those people enough for the impact that I'm sure that they don't even know they've had in my life and in my, in my walk with God. We had lots and lots of people pouring into them and investing in them. And so they all became part of, of kind of developing who our kids became. I would definitely say that if it wasn't like my leaders that I had, I would not have become the man of God that I am now which is why I want to be back here now, because I want to do the exact same thing for the students that I'm investing into now. Being a part of that and being a part of that in Super Church and Children's Ministry helps develop a lot of the leadership things that, that I even have now. And You know, I, I think it was pretty good uh, achievement when we, we went to parent-teacher conferences, actually, and his teacher was saying she <laughs> admires <laughs> how our kids are and, how, and what we're doing to raise them. And I, I don't think it's just us. I think that carries from what happens here at church. Mm -hmm. Because of BCC kids, um, my daughter was on the mission field. She's going to go on the mission field again. My son, you know, has gone on a mission trip and he's going to go again. And, and, I, and I know that has a lot to do with because of the kids ministry. Well, I know for me, I've, I've been working in children's ministry for about 10 years now. And uh, I've worked a lot with the preschool kids. And I honestly can say every time that um, I teach preschool, God shows up somehow. Even though it looks crazy and out of control some days, it's the Holy Spirit is present. And every single time I work, I'm amazed at what God can do. I remember for my kids, they would learn the story about Noah or about 
Adam and Eve. And even though they just understood the story part as a preschooler, when they got to grade school and then older, all along their life, different, um, they would hear different messages about those stories. And they didn't have to go back to scratch and go, what's, I don't know that story. Who is that and what happened? They know all the details of the story. And so now they just get to learn like the faith in it. I believe in greater things. 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 I live over in the Bryan School District, and there's not like, um, there's not sidewalks there, so they just walk through my front yard. Uh, thankfully, I'm not like one of those grass people. <laughs> Some of y'all love your grass way too much. So I live in the Omaha Bryan uh, School District, and so I have a lot of high school students that walk through my front yard. And every time I see them walk through my front yard, uh, usually I'll, I'll try and have a conversation with them if I can, but there's... There's a couple times in there that I'll, I'll have this student walk in my front yard and I will have been reminded of when I saw them in Revolution, when I saw them at Pumpkin Bowl or one of our events. Uh, because a few years back, uh, we have this annual flag football tournament that some of you guys played in a long time ago and then some of you just know about. It's, it's our flag football tournament and our life groups, they play each other. And what we do that for is uh, a chance for our students to bring their friends to a flag football tournament and get to know us. And one year we had, uh, we had like these 30 or 40 students from Bryan High School come to our flag football tournament called Pumpkin Bowl. And I remember looking at all of these students from Omaha Bryan, because at the time I think we only had a couple of students that went to Bryan. I remember looking at all of these students from Omaha Bryan and I'm like, holy cow, how did this happen? And I believe that God kind of encourages me to look beyond just the surface and to look into what's really going on. And as I looked into what's going on, I actually realized how the, this mass amount of Omaha Bryan High School students came to our flag football tournament. And as I retraced the steps, and I could retrace them a little bit further than I'm going to this morning, but I had this really uh, crazy revelation. Dylan Van Ornum, right there. Did you go to Bryan High School? What high school did you go to? You went to Millard South High School. So Dylan Van Ornum went to Millard South High School, and I'm gonna tell you right now that he's actually one of the main reasons that those 30 or 40 Bryan High School students came through our youth ministry. And here's why. Because Dylan and his, his amazing family, they're all incredible, but Dylan went through our children's ministry, and when he was a child, he met this kid called Zach Wolf. Zach Wolf, Zach, do your parents go to church here? No, they don't. Actually, it, just to share with some of you, we have about 200 teenagers here on a Wednesday night. About 60%, if not more, of the, them, their families don't go to church here or don't go to church at all. That's our youth ministry, the shelter and revolution. But when Dylan was in children's church, in super church here, he met this kid who lived down the street from him called Zach Wolf, and they started a relationship. I think Dylan was able to get him to come to super church once, but then Dylan was like, too cool for school and so he didn't but but then in the eighth grade in the eighth grade Zach came to shelter with Dylan in the eighth grade is when he had this fun and, and Zach was the first guy talking in that testimony testimony video but Zach realized that this God thing wasn't just some crazy thing that people did but that there was this real relationship and 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 because of Dylan bringing Zach and Zach being a light in Omaha Brian which by the way that school needs lights Zach being a light in that school and this other, this other awesome leaders of our who, who, who serves in shelter, Ayeli, those two students from our junior high ministry are the reason that 30 or 40 Bryan High School students had the opportunity to hear the love of Jesus. Not all of them come, go to church right now. Some of them do. But even though they don't go, they all know that there's a place where there's real love. And it all started because some kids in our super church our children's ministry is making a huge impact in our church. Our junior high ministry is making a huge impact in our city. And you guys get to be a part of it. Even though they're not your kids, they are your kids. 
So I just wanted to share that with you guys. See, what God has called Bellevue Christian Center to do is not just take care of us. This room, the hundreds of thousand dollars in this room, in the foyer, in the auditorium, in the bathrooms, and the, and the, the connection is not just about, but it's about saturating our city with the heart of God. And I want to tell you, folks, I, I am somewhat proud to bring people to my church. Because I love it. I love the word that's preached. I love the worship. I love the people. I love my church. But you know what? I don't feel the same way about bringing parents with kids downstairs. I don't get excited about meeting a parent in the foyer. Oh, it's my first time here. Oh, you have a lovely church. Well, let me take you downstairs and let you see where our children worship. I'm embarrassed. So, as faithful as I was, as faithful as you were, to help make this happen, I'm asking you to make a path for other children to come to bear. I'm asking you to, to extend yourself with me in Greater Things Kids Edition. I want everyone to get out a card. Go ahead and get it out. I want everyone to have a card, each family. Go ahead and get it out. If you didn't bring it, fill it out. Go ahead. I want everyone to turn one in. If, if financially you're not able to, I want you to write on that, and I'm going to be praying. But I want everybody to turn in the card this, this morning. I want you to go ahead and fill it out. Print legibly. Make sure you print legibly. The business office would kiss your feet if you would print legibly. So they don't have to call and say, who is this? What is this address? What's this email? Please print legibly. On the back, as Corey said, it gives us a guide. This is only a guide to show us how as a church we're going to make or raise $800,000. How God's going to encourage us to raise it. This is only a guide. Some of you can give more. Some of you might can't give that amount. I believe everybody can give something. I believe everybody can give something. Now hear me. I am not as excited about raising $800,000 as I am excited about Bellevue Christian Center as a family coming together and say, we're going to see this through. See, there's some people who could give us $800,000. There's some people who believe in children that much who will give us the money. But that's not what God is trying to do. God is trying to see if Bellevue Christian Center will make a path, will encourage, will promote children in their fellowship. If they will have an attitude and a heart to say, listen, if upstairs where the big adults are, are hanging out is beautiful, then downstairs where the children are going to be is going to be just as beautiful. It's going to be a safe place. It's going to be a secure place. It's going to be operated by people who love Jesus and love our kids. That when guests come here, when people who don't go here come and bring their kids downstairs, they're going to say, well, man, that loud, big mouth black pastor didn't turn me on. But what's going on with my kids? I like that. I like that. And when they get home and they leave here and they start talking about what's going on with their kids, they'll say, man, that's a place I want to go. I believe that's what turns the heart of God. I believe God gets excited when we get excited about kids. So I want everyone to fill this out, families, individuals. I want our uh, people who are going to be receiving our donations today, our faith promises, come on and grab a spot. We're going to present them to our children this morning. Come on, kids, move, move. Grab your spot. Amen. Can we give our bucket carriers a big round of applause this morning? <laughs> Amen. So, everybody got your faith promise card filled out? Everybody got one? If you're a guest here with us today, we just ask that you fill one out. And, and if you want to contribute, please do. If you don't, just write on there, we'll be praying for you. And the reason you're here, many of you Shelts people, because we, we are blessing your kids. And thank you. Thank you so much for being here with us today. So we're going to pray. And then we're going to celebrate by faith what God's going to do over the next 24 months as we take care of the area downstairs and make it beautiful for God's 
most precious babies, his children. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you today for what you have done and what you are doing. God, we yield ourselves. We yield ourselves, not just our hearts, not just our hands and feet, but God, we yield our pocketbooks to you right now. God, we trust you that as we extend ourselves by faith, that God, your favor is going to be upon us. And God, you're going to take care of cars and you're going to take care of houses. And God, you're going to allow us, you're going to give us a means by which we can do more by trusting you than we can on our own. God, we believe, we believe in our children. We believe in the children that are here today. And God, today as we give, we're believing in the children that are yet to come. God, we're making room for them. We're preparing a place for our children. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, amen.